every time our nation goes into election times, the pulpit begins to preach a contrary declaration that the hope of a nation is in a card and not in prayers, even from the pulpit. As gloomy as things are from the natural perspective in our nation, we are still not seeing robust prayers rising from churches. I hope you know that territorial incense can be measured. There are gifts that men are given for what God has called them to do. Intercessors, for example. If an intercessor comes in, he should be able to sense how much intercession has happened. And there's not much praying. People have been adv advised to hustle more than to pray more. Because faith in God has been called foolishness. And the reason why it became foolishness was that there was something that was taught as faith in God that is not faith in God. So one of the ways the enemy takes out an emphasis in God is to corrupt it, give it a different definition, give it a different process, and ultimately give it a different end. So that when it does not yield as expected, people jettison it, they drop it aside, and then they say, no, it's not, it's not about... Have you heard people say that prayer does not work? It's because somebody taught them prayer. And they believed that the activity was prayer. And when it did not work, they reached that conclusion. So what God will need to do is to do a recovery doctrinally. Because when you see somebody who is compromising, like somebody who begins to create a doctrine around a path so that at the end he can profit from people who walk on that path. When you check, the problem is not forced covetousness. The problem is wrong teaching. And so when the person learns wrong and applies the, the wrong teaching on an accurate path, he finds out that it's not working. Are you with me? I remember the first night I drove an automatic transmission was for a lady that I loved so much. My wife is the one I love so much now. But that time, now I've not even known my wife existed. Meanwhile, she loved somebody else. And why I could not talk to her was because I looked at my future and I didn't see light. And this lady was made. Oh, Jesus, she was made. She was every young man's dream. So I went for a meeting in church. And then she needed to drive out and pick another vehicle for a family member. And then she caught the young man hanging out with some other lady. And the young man insulted her because the other lady was there. So she stormed out. Knew why I didn't have a car that time in Lagos. I was already at the bus stop. I don't know. Maybe somebody had told her that ah, this guy is already dying to have you around. So she just drove to the bus stop, flung the door and said, Tolu, come in. And I was like, hey! So I quickly came in. That night we drove to the island to pick another car. So she drove. When we now got there, she now told me she would drive that she'll drive the other car. I should drive her own car. And it was automatic transmission. So I had to tell her, I can drive. But I can't do the automatic transmission. Okay, this is what you should do. I'll go slowly. And then we now join it slowly. Well, as Jesus will have it, we still did not get married. But we're friends for a while. And for that time, it was good. Very, very clean relationship. But you really did care about me. That time. I don't know now. Um, and it's not necessary now, Sha, because my wife cares about me. It's good. Uh, so. But I'm just telling you how that side of me started. Now, whether it's automatic or whatever it is. If it's a car, if it's a truck, I will drive it. Because it's not energy they used to drive truck. When we're young, we used to think, ah, trailer, you have to go and gym. No. Their steering's are even designed to be softer than our own. If you learn wrong, your desire to follow the ways of God will produce frustration. Because you'll be trying to apply strange knowledge on an accurate path. And so if you are not willing to relearn, what happens is that you, you can create systems that will patch up the road. So what they cut for you was a, a round peg, but the hole is square. It means there will be spaces. So you can look for paper and chuck it on the side, Abby. I shall come back or no. That's why I put compromise. How will I say that God did not help me? So before I testify that God helped me, let me first help God. To help me. You see, the chain of help becomes longer. God is saying, Let's do it. I say, God, don't worry, don't worry. You don't need to stress yourself. I can help you. 
when I now help you, then you will now testify that you help me. The little I moved around the guys in Lagos, in the deeper life guys, I told on Reverend Austin yesterday, I said, ah, it means deeper life is, is a wealthy ministry. And I got to know that there was a time when companies, expatriate companies, so you have a lot of deeper life people who used to be in Chevron Shell and all of that, the expatriate companies, because they know that that church has chosen righteousness, we go to the church and say, do you have guys that we can employ? Because we know that the deeper life member will not steal our money. You see that kind of thing? So all this hustling to get a job, if a church stands right, people will send and say, Shalom Akakan. We can penetrate with ease. That ministry has shown that purity does not always mean poverty. Even in this life, the pure will inherit. These are things that God has put in place across the continent to show us that things work on that straight path. I remember the first time I spoke to Pastor Coach. I went for Wavbeck that year and he was just walking around like I walk around sometimes. And I now greeted him, sir. I have a question. He said, what's your question? I said, what? This whole thing that you have that you are doing here. What is it about? He said, how many years have you been in ministry? I said, five. He said, you will do great things, but you need two tools. This is faith in God and hard work. And I kept those things in my heart. Faith in God and hard work. Mentally, you can't meet me where I was yesterday. In my work with God, I push, I push, and there are notifications that I entered a new place every day. I'm sure my wife is watching and she's wondering how I, there was a way I was at home. But there are things that can be tweaked. Not smoke though. Yeah, because there are people who used to smoke something to high. There are things that can be tweaked in the spirit that gift what is required to be able to do what God wants you to do. So that your life becomes a testament that God gives when you are withdrawn from the landscape. That a man once came and pioneered a path that was called impossible, but it was possible because he stayed with Jesus. That's what I want my testimony to be. There are three things he said. The exploits of faith. We are also being, advert also being advertised to us at the errors of faith. Strange men fill our continent. To make us understand that if you choose a path that is divorced from the path of true faith, you will not die. But your life will be a lesson to people that this is not how to live. And many are doing a lot on media right now to pad up reputations that are crashing. Which would have been unnecessary if they embraced true faith because true faith is process worked. Are you with me? Some people believe that if you desire the car now, the car drops now. No, it is your heart that is aware of the now reception. Earth will catch up with what you have received. So the church became open to manipulated testimonies because everybody wanted to prove that that erroneous doctrine was true for them. So you can sleep around and get a job and then you come and say, I did not even apply for the job. And I know people get jobs they didn't apply for. Because I know that God moves things to apply for people. Me, I know. I know if I apply. Or someone says, maybe I just walked in. The MD just said, you're already employed. But the Bible says that God is a God of knowledge. And by him, all actions are weighed. He knows deception. So we see the exploits of faith. And that's a book by... Um, the bishop, David J. Depo, right? There's a book like that, Experts of Faith. They are the errors of faith. And then God across, if you listen well, there is a reindoctrination onto the part of faith. These are tools that God is using in this hour to reteach his church what scriptural faith in Christ is. The Bible bears witness in fourfold that the just 
That's that man who has been made righteous by the sacrifice of the Christ is allocated only one spiritual technology for survival. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. Let's run. Habakkuk 2 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Romans 1 17. Help me. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. How? From faith to faith. So everybody is allocated faith for everything that God will do in your life that will advertise his accurate desire for your existence will be journeys from faith to faith. So you will have faith to be saved. You will have faith to be married. You will have faith to, to give back to children. You will have faith to have companies. You will have faith to have cars. So that the signature or the source of everything that the believer has to show is faith. So the Bible says that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. The word sin there is not doing something wrong. That's transgression. Sin there means that he misses the mark of God's righteousness. He can be fine, but it's below standard. Because it is not of faith. It means that it only delivers a product. It does not reveal the righteousness of God. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Any difference between here and Habakkuk is a word that is missing. His... Because in the New Testament economy, a man's faith is substituted for by the faith of Christ. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. Now the life that I live in my body, my flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. There is a substitution. If you got his life, then you got his faith. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Galatians 3, 11. Four witnesses. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. So it's saying that the proof that it was not the law that justified you is that you are called to live by faith. If you are called to live by faith, it means that you were saved also by faith. So your justification is by faith. And if justification is produced by faith, then life will also be produced by faith. If your justification was produced by the fulfillment of the law, then you will live your life also fulfilling the law. What produced you is what sustains you. That's why faith is important. You must just get the education right, get the practice right, because there's no option. Man will breathe oxygen. In case you run out of oxygen, if you put ammonia in your nose, you are gone. You can't survive on nitrogen. There's no, just like there's no option to live in by oxygen. There's no option to live in by faith. I'm stressing that point so that you know that you need to trust Jesus to learn. Your profiting is in faith existence. Your advantage is in faith existence. It means your mates can start with what they can physically see. But what you can see spiritually is more superior to what you can see physically. Your hearing, which is also of faith, your knowing, which is also of faith, is superior to your physical senses. And you need to master living that way. If I take you to the moon, you will need to master how to walk differently. Or else, you will go off it. And I may not... Is there recovery? Gravity there is almost non-existence. So if you float, you keep floating until life ends. May you not be in the kingdom and be stranded. Amen. What makes us sit with God and say, Lord, my ears must hear you. is because I understand that I cannot have faith 
where I cannot hear. So I need eyes in the spirit more than I need a car. Because it's the sight now it's supposed to bring the car. Brothers, you need hearing capacity more than you need a wife. Because if you miss hair and you marry your arrow, you know, the church has a way of not allowing you to say, uh, I can hear better now. I pass a Even your mouth will say, Guy, you quickly quote what God has. Meanwhile, well, let me not go into that issue. The first rule we need to fulfill in activating that scripture is to do all that it takes to ensure that it is God that joins together. I don't want to start a fight. The Bible says what God has joined together. Sometimes men manipulate together and they want God to glue it. Am I lying? May you find mercy that before government ties you together, you will know if it is God that is joining you. Amen. Oh, Jesus, even if it's the last minute, can you bring conviction as to your involvement or not? Amen. You will not understand. You know, single people want to marry, Abby. Say, marry, 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 marry. If you miss marry, you will know that singleness is better. If a man mismarries, that's why you need your tools. And what we are, I'm doing this because I want you to have perfected the use of your tools, sister. It is criminal that the first time you are testing hearing is when somebody comes to propose to you, as well. If he has a car and has a house and ends in six or seven figures, your discernment will be clouded. That's why you need to start deploying it now. When you go to pick your clothes, can you ask Jesus, should I pick this one or this one? Most times those clothes are inconsequential. But you will have mastered his voice. And in mastering his voice, it's not just what he's saying. There's how he speaks. Me and Pastor Ola can preach the same message. We can even decide to read the same script to you. The only way you can differentiate our voices is that you have heard both of us for long. Are you with me? That's how the how is revealed. That there is a discerning tool that's already lodged in your heart. That even if what is coming out of that voice that you know is the voice of God is something that is against your will, you can embrace it. Because you know the voice. What do you do to hear God very well, Michael? You pray. Good. If you're only conscious of the voice of God when you have hit that height in prayer, your life will have gaps. Because he not only talks when you're actively engaging him, he scatters his utterance. And the scattering of the utterance many times is what summons you to prayer. Are you with me? So, Olympics will start started or we start? Okay, don't know. Ah, it's very spiritual. God bless you. Okay. The Euro is just finished. So you may be watching the Euro final and he begins to talk to you. Sometimes he plays a song in your spirit. Sometimes a verse of scripture. And you are trying to align that verse of scripture with what is happening on the field. That maybe, oh God, is using this man to teach me something. No, no, no. What he's doing is that he's calling you away from Germany. Come into the secret place. If you only hear him when he arrives, you will have missed instructions. Adam must have been roaming. Immediately sensed that God had come, he went into hiding. He didn't even go for the meeting. He, he just, he now talked himself in the midst of so many things. And it was because he was afraid. His fear was built into his consciousness. And that's the key word here for faith, consciousness. Somebody say consciousness. He was conscious of being naked and so he hid himself. When you come into the house, maybe you have a nephew or a niece who runs at you naked. What do you ask them? Eh? Okay. That's if the person is very small. If the person has grown a little, what do you ask them? Why did you? Why did you? Oh, yeah, now. 
If they used to wear clothes for that person, you say, where is your cloth? If he's somebody grown enough to wear his own cloth or take it off, what do you ask them? Why did you remove your cloth? Why are you naked? But God did not ask that question. God was more concerned not about the experience. He was more concerned about the communication. I know you're naked. But who told you? Because your life was designed to thrive by voices. Now, we may not have time to probe, but that question is big. Because we need to unlock a lot of things. And I'll tell you why. Who told them that they were naked? Did anybody tell them? No, did, did the serpent speak to the point of now you are naked? So who told them? You see, when God speaks to you, and it registers as faith, what keeps you in faith is that that faith inside you has a voice. There are communications with the serpent deposited a possibility in their heart. That possibility was not exactly what God had in store for them, so it's called anti-faith. Stay with me. But just like faith keeps speaking, the anti-faith also keeps speaking. God's coming to them had never established a vocabulary like naked. So that word I'm saying is not captured in the register. You know what register is? A set of words that have to do with something. The word naked is not in the register of life. So God is saying, which school did you go to? Which dictionary did you read? I want to know the source. The word you are using is not in life. Let's talk back a little, then we'll come back here. I told my wife this morning, I said in this house, we pray differently from this morning. Me and I unlocked this thing before I went to bed yesterday night. I said in this house, we pray differently. And we're going to talk differently. Because if God reveals it, it's an invitation to engage it. It means there's a reward for it. And that's why I'm trying to push this thing. When I come on Sunday, I'll teach on this faith thing. I'm going to teach on what the Bible calls the wholesome tongue. Because the Bible says that the wholesome tongue is like a tree of life. That's what I was trying to pray the other time. That God will give us a new language. The average believer who claims he has faith does not talk well. If you go to chapter 2, for time's sake, you'll find out that chapter 2 from verse 13. Let's do from verse 13. 13, 13. Okay, 14. Is it 14? Ah, okay, 15. Yes. Now, and the Lord God took the man and put him into... If you're confused, just raise up your hand because I want you to get this truth because I want you to start acting out tonight. You rehearse, 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 rehearse. It may take you two years to get it right. Every time you get it wrong, pull back and quickly get it right. But we need to master speech. Earth was not designed to respond to everybody. In Genesis 1, earth responded to God. It means that in learning how to command the earth you will need to learn how God speaks what we are trying to do is to look for God's potential and put in our own words earth responds not only to potential it speaks to a kind of language and you must know how it speaks there are things that God does not say about situations are you with me there are things that God does not say about situations Maybe when I come on Sunday, I, I'll take you to, Rome, to that, I think that's Romans chapter 4, when God was speaking about Abraham. Abraham was barren. God did not call him that name. God rather called him a father of many nations. Even though there was nothing showing in the life of Abraham, God was stuck to his identity in him. I'm going to keep calling you this because you, will, you are that. Life will catch up with my communication. And I found out that in prayer, Pastor Diola, a child comes, maybe he didn't do well in school. Say, oh Lord, I come on, you do. You have your heart, your heart has registered the consciousness of Olodo. And Olodo is not in God's register. It is in the register of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Yes. When I became, 
when I was driving my son back from school this morning, I almost exploded because these things started coming to me. And God, and God said to me, he said, son, son, do you know that originally, if a, if a man does something, he's not supposed to be able to think that he will fail. Because that word failure is not in your register. It's in the knowledge of good and evil. That's where the knowledge is. I, the Lord, knows that there's something like favor, but like failure. But you are not supposed to live in the consciousness of what is. You're supposed to live in the consciousness of what is allocated. You were gifted one tree, and that tree only brings positivity. I'm not teaching positive speaking. That's why I'm staying in scriptures. You got to know that it's possible to marry and divorce from the wrong tree. So when they came to um to, to Jesus and said, "Okay, so who will be? Who will be?" What did Jesus say to them? He said, in the beginning, it was not so. It means when the blueprint of marriage was written, the possibilities of divorce were not captured inside it. Exposure to a strange tree is what canceled it. If Jesus calls you into ministry, in the original writings, there's nothing like ministerial failure. If you will live by faith, you will need to find the original writings. There are some things you cannot pray. There are some things you will never say. Like I said, it takes time. Is it that you not have negative experiences? But you see, the words in your register, the possibilities in life are strong enough to cancel the negative things. So we don't, I'm not even going to vocalize them. I'm just going to stay on what God has said is my reality. And as the words are released, they will collide with what resists it. The Bible says his word is alive and it is effective. God, don't let this marriage crash. The thoughts, the thoughts, I was sharing with one of our ministry sons in the US yesterday morning, he's planning to marry, so he was having plenty of bad dreams. And I told him, I said 95% of those who want to marry used to have bad dreams. When Satan now sees that you can wield faith against them, he will now look for people that you believe. The people around you will not start marriage. Your wife wants to give birth to children. You, they always have bad dreams. I, I had the dream that this person died after this thing happened. Yes, it's because the enemy is trying to force into your heart. He knows. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows forth the issues of life. So I now told him, every time you hear those things, go back to your books. A songwriter says, do not doubt in the dark what you were told in the light. For the one who has called you has never failed at all. What God does for the believer is that he comes beyond that season. So they say that your wife will die and you've seen your wife and this child they want to give birth to graduating from university. Some of you are having, some of you are having visions now. You're having dreams and the dreams don't make sense. But you keep remembering them. Some of you are having dreams of greatness. What God is doing is depositing tools into your future so that you can be confident when the enemy came and you can tell the enemy I know something is happening but God had spoken to me 8 years ago that this will happen your certificates can get you a job you will need a spirit to keep the job it's, it's, Pastor Dela, it's becoming a world of spirits so you must find your handle on the spirit realm and what I'm advertising to you tonight is faith and it must begin from you having embraced the communication of the spirit with whom you have to do. Which does not first start with God speak to me. Is that you read what he has said.